Some of us wake up every single day and look back over our lives only to realize that we are stuck and can't seem to break free. I was lost for 36 years. Imagine that. 36 years of walking around in total darkness. I did what everybody else did. Chased the almighty dollar, hoping that one day it would make me valuable. I believe the majority of people is looking for a better life. I always wanted a better life, but I was stuck. Mentally, I was paralyzed by self-doubt. Emotionally, I was broken and suffering from depression. Spiritually, I was so empty I filled myself with addiction. And physically, I was so out of control until incarceration was society's only option. So the question is, how do we break free in order to have a better life? How do we free ourselves from the very thoughts that confine us and prevent us from believing in ourselves so that we can be free mentally? How do we learn to forgive those who hurt us or forgive ourselves from past mistakes in order to be free emotionally? How do we move forward and begin accomplishing our goals in this life so that we can experience freedom physically? And most importantly, how do we go beyond what we see with our eyes in the material world in order to fill that void inside of us so that we can be free spiritually. Imagine, if you will, each one of us had to climb this huge mountain in order to reach our greatest potential. The difficulty of accomplishing such feat was determined by the amount of luggage we decided to carry. The luggage we carry in terms of reaching our greatest potential comes from the weight of what we believe, our emotions, our spirit, our experiences, as well as friends and family. As you made your way up this mountain, you couldn't help but notice that some of the climbers had stopped along the way in order to get rid of some of the luggage in which they were carrying. After seeing this, you thought to yourself, how could they possibly reach their greatest potential by getting rid of some of the very things that made them who they were? In no time at all, not only had those who lightened their load passed you, but they had gone so far ahead until you could no longer see them. It was at this point you realized that those who had gone ahead of you would reach their potential before you and this caused you to consider getting rid of some of your own luggage. However, at the same time you began replaying voices of friends and family who had now become a part of you. You could hear them tell you turn around. It's too difficult. You can't do it. Don't put yourself through this. It's just not worth it. After listening to these voices, you began experiencing negative emotion, feeling hopeless and helpless. Despair, sorrow, and depression began seeping in, making everything feel impossible. After listening to those voices and experiencing those negative emotions, you somehow embraced self-doubt which caused you to believe that you could not go on in order to reach your potential. It wasn't until 
you watch everyone pass you by that you realize that you were no longer going forward or making progress and you had reached your breaking point a point in which you would have to decide a choice between breaking free in order to reach your potential versus holding on to the weight of everything that has held you back in all reality this is how it is in the real world the mountain represents the challenges in which we must go through in order to reach our potential. The luggage represents the weight of anything that holds us back or prevents us from reaching our God-given gift. So how are we held back or imprisoned mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically? First of all, we have to understand that what we think and believe will determine if we are free or if we are confined by our very own thoughts. If I embrace self-doubt and fear, then I come to imprison myself by believing that I am not capable of accomplishing anything and I am paralyzed by the fear of failure. So how do we become prisoners emotionally? This happens when we refuse to forgive ourselves or forgive those who've hurt us. And we hold on to the past and we hold on to the pain and we hold on to the sorrow and we refuse to let go of those who've passed on and we become prisoners of our own emotions. So how do we confine ourselves spiritually? This happens when we fail to understand our purpose and we come to believe that our source of love, life, and happiness comes from the very house we live in or the clothes on our back or the diamonds on our finger or the car that we drive. Finally, how do we confine ourselves physically? This happens when we tie ourselves down to all kinds of addictions that strip away our self-control or we end up in hurtful and abusive and controlling relationships that take away our freedom or we end up so out of control until we find ourselves incarcerated. Someone once said Freedom is not free. This is still true today. Freedom, true freedom, requires effort, determination, and discipline. In order to have it, it is an investment we must make in ourselves.